Right, so for King Drunk, back again with another attempt at beer review. The one I'm going to review just now is one. It's the first for me, it's a Chinese beer. And it's a uh, Qingdao 4.7 on a Richter scale. Now, Qingdao, that's how you apparently pronounce that. When I looked at it, I tried to come away with something completely different, but I looked at <laughs> how you pronounce it on the internet and it's pronounced Qingdao. So there you go, if anyone out there, if anyone in China is watching my review, did I say it properly? Or any Chinese people in the UK? Did I say it properly? So anyway, 4.7 on a Richter scale, Chinese lager, it is a first for me. I have not done a Chinese lager, I've done Singapore, places like that, Thailand. There's the Qingdao uh, bottle crown. I've seen it in the supermarket, as their stock says. I don't know if any of the other ones do. But it's a nice big 640ml bottle. Now, the winter is about to leave us, and I suppose we'll get the odd little bit of hot sunshine coming shortly. And these are the kind of bottles you want in your fridge, actually, when you've had a hard day and you're feeling sorry for yourself. So anyway, here's a Qingdao, here's a pour. We'll go down here. Very, very light in colour. Actually looks quite nice, actually. Look at that. Give it a tap. That looks absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Very, very yellowish. Didn't mean to say that, but it is very, very yellowish in colour. I've got to admit that, maybe the lighting in here, I don't know if it's picking up, it actually looks like a shandy to be honest with you. A lot of carbonation going up there for a 4.7 beer. Give it another tap. I've got the frog's eggs on it, which drive me up the wall. So anyway, here we go, bring it up there closer. Get the frog's eggs on it. Go in here for the, the aroma, see what I can pick up from the Qingdao. 4.7 on the Richter scale. Right away you're getting a lovely fresh uh, aroma from that. Very much like a, now I'm going back, reminiscing like so when I've uh, been in the countryside uh, in my grands when I was a kid in Ireland and uh, you've got that lovely hayfield smell uh, when they've just cut the hay and it's just lying and it's drying in the sun and it's wafting about in the air. You've got that lovely hayfield smell about it. Also, you're picking up the rice. Not so much like corn syrupy rice type smell, but it is there. But not as sickly as the corn syrup. A little bit of uh, floral note in there as well. It actually smells quite nice. So anyway, going in here for the Ching Tao. Sofa King drunk. 4.7 on the Richter scale for this. So, Slangy Va, let's see what it has to offer. Well, it is very, very thin uh, on the taste buds, which a lot of the, the, the Far East beers seem to have, like beers from Singapore, uh, Thailand, and now Chinese beer that I've, I've tried. They seem to be very thin, and I don't know what the reason for that is, but it's got a nice floral note in there. Very... I, says, I touched on again, the thinness of the beer is uh, the thinness of the beer likes it. It's got a, a, a slight bready note about it as well, uh, to be honest with you. When you taste it, it it's got a sort of bready note of a uh, 
a white starchy loaf, a UK starchy loaf, something like a, a mother's pride with your your uh, your grass, slight bit of grass in there, very very dry sharp finish as well. It's actually not that bad. I normally class these beers, the Far East beers, uh, I seem to call them foodie beers, that I couldn't session on this. Uh, it kind of falls into that category, but I think if I was in China and uh, I was out, and obviously you get it in the draft from the source, a lot of carbonation going up in it. It's keeping it alive, although the beer's alive but the head's dead, which for someone north of the border would be like a head in a beer. It's actually not that bad. But a little bit of citrus in there as well, a little bit of lime citrus in there as well. It's actually got a bit of character about it. It's not the worst lager I've drank. Could I session on this? This is probably the first Far East beer that I'd probably say, yeah, I could. There's a guy out there, he's a uh, good beer review, you should check him out. Jez uh, Beer Reviews, uh, an Australian guy. And he seems to get all these beers, obviously, because it's in his neck of the woods. Well, it's not really his neck of the woods. Maybe six or seven hours away in a plane to get these places. Maybe longer than that, Jess. <laughs> but anyway, I said to him, I put a comment when he's saying it was a, it was a foodie beer. Like, so I find a lot of these beers, like, you could have, like, with, with oriental food. And you could maybe have one or two when you've had your meal and then after that you would have to move on to something else. This is actually something I could session on, the Qingdao. I could actually session on this. What do you make it, Jess? Let me know, I'd be intrigued to know, because I dare say you can get that down under in Australia. Qingdao. I don't know where to get Qingdao from that from. <laughs> it, re it really intrigues me, that. The 4.7 on the Richter scale, it's not the worst beer I've drank in my life and it's it's actually got, it has got a lot of happening in the mouth. Now I picked this up in the uh, Asda, uh, Asda's were selling this for 2.66 a bottle and uh, I looked at it long and hard because it was a big, in the big bottle section as I like to call it and it was probably the only one I hadn't tried. Because I thought to myself, I'm not justifying paying two sixty six for a bottle of beer, it's a foodie beer. So I was in there a couple of weeks ago and I saw it, they had reduced it. And they had knocked it off, a quid off it, they were selling it at 166 and I thought, well, I'm going to have to buy it. It's going to be the first chance to get it. But yeah, honestly, I would honestly pay the two sixty six for that. I would, I would actually honestly pay it. And don't get me wrong, it would be a good beer with the food. Like say your, your Chinese meal, nice Cantonese, something nice and spicy. I can't get away with the colour of it, to be honest with you. It's a very, very golden, yellowish, very, very, you would class that as like a shandy. Nice carbonation about it. It's really quite nice. Picking up, kind of picking up a like a cooking apple uh, kind of taste to it as well. Uh, it's actually not that bad. So anyway, I'm going to give the Qingdao. It's the only way I'm going to go Cantonese. Qingdao 4.7 on the Richter scale beer from China. I'm going to give that a sofa king drunk rating. And would I drink this again? I think I would actually. I'm going to give this a sofa king drunk rating of a seven and a half out of ten. So anyway, if anyone out there has had a go at the Ching Tao, give us a shout and leave your comments below. And if not, if you stuck around to the end of this video, Sanji Va, and I'll see you in another beer review. Ciao for now. Keep drinking the good beer.